Welcome back Mathletes and in this video we're going to talk about the Triangle Inequality Theorem. What is it? How do we know that's what it is? And how do we use it? Okay, so the Triangle Inequality Theorem we talked about briefly earlier and we talked about how the fact that if you have three points and they are collinear, right, then the distance between the first two plus the distance between the second and third would equal the distance between the first and the third. Well, if they're not collinear, then they would form a triangle, right? And that triangle then would have the relationship that the distance between two points plus the distance between uh, a second and third point would be have to be greater than the distance between the first and the third. A triangle can be formed with three non-collinear points, A, B, and C, such that the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C will be greater than the distance from A to C. So we're gonna prove that, but in order to do that, we need to do this little intermediate proof. There's more than one way to prove this theorem, but the way that we're gonna do it is really intuitive if you already have this little bit of information, which we haven't proven yet. So let's do a quick intermediate proof. And this is a proof of what's called the shortest distance theorem, okay? The shortest distance theorem says that the shortest distance between a point and any line is going to be the segment from that point to the line forming a right angle with the line, okay? So um, that probably seems like it makes a lot of sense, but let's prove it. And it doesn't take long to prove. It's a really quick proof, all right? So here I'm given that segment PB is perpendicular to line AB. And what I want to prove is that the distance from P to B is going to be less than the distance from P to A. Here's our diagram that really shows exactly what I'm doing, okay? Pretty quick and easy proof. First, take care of business. Claim, claim what's given and why you know. Now, next we're gonna add something to our drawing. We're just gonna add a segment between P and A. Now that segment creates something. It's a triangle, right? Yeah, it's a big surprise there. Yeah, but then the triangle is in fact a specific kind of triangle, right? It's a right triangle. So let's claim a triangle PAB is a right triangle based on the definition of a right triangle. Okay, voila. Next, we're gonna use our good friend, the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So we're just gonna state the Pythagorean theorem in terms of this right triangle. Remember how that goes? We've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared, as long as c is the hypotenuse in a right triangle, and a and b are the legs. So in this case, we've got, in this case, we've got the distance a to b squared plus the distance from b to p squared is going to be equal to the distance from a to p squared. Let's write that down, and we'll call it the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now we have that much. Now, we're gonna pull out a trick from our last proof. Do you remember? We took away part of a side of an equation and made it into an inequality. Let's do that. In this case, we're gonna say that uh, we're gonna take away the a, b squared, and then that means that this side is gonna be greater than this side, right? What we have now is the distance from P to B squared is gonna be less than the distance from A to P squared. And that's because P to B squared is greater than zero and we subtracted that away. Now this looks awfully like what we're looking for. And really, if the squares are um, greater, then we can say that those square roots of those distances are also going to follow suit. All right, and so we have now that the distance from P to B is less than the distance from P to A because of these distances being positive here. So now we're ready to use that theorem in this proof. We ready to go? Okay, so I already went ahead and put our first step up because you know how to do that. Second step, we're gonna claim that um, shortest distance theorem. We're gonna actually do it for two situations. We're gonna say that thinking about this line here, that the shortest distance from B to this line here is gonna be BD. So we're gonna say uh, BD is less than BA by the shortest distance theorem. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. 
So on the other side, we're going to say CD is less than AC. We've got the distance from B to D is less than the distance from B to A. The distance from BD is less than the distance from B to A. And we also have the distance from CD is less than the distance from C to A. Okay, and both of those we can say by the shortest distance theorem. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add these inequalities together. Both of these sides can be added together into one side of a less than inequality, and both of these sides can be added to one side of a less than inequality. So what we were really doing is adding the two things that were smaller together and the two things that are larger together and saying that the result, the, the smaller sum on the one side and the larger sum on the other. So it looks like this. B, the distance from B to D plus the distance from C to D will have to be less than the distance from A to B plus the distance from A to C. But now let's look at the diagram because if we look at that, I know that the distance from B to D plus the distance from C to D is going to be the distance from B to C, which is what we really wanted. Okay, so that ends up looking like this. The distance from B to C is equal to the distance from A to B plus the distance from A to C, all right? And that's just by the segment addition postulate. And I took a second and just rewrote that inequality so it looked like what we were trying to prove, and I put the larger thing on the left-hand side. Okay, Woo! we proved that thing. Next, let's look at just a couple of examples of how we can actually use that to decide whether or not the information that we're given really will make a triangle or not. So one thing I didn't really say about that proof is we only proved that the side length of one side plus another side would have to be greater than the third side. But we could do that with all three iterations of that triangle. Um, and so, I mean, to be a really truly complete proof, you would do that, but it's one of those without loss of generality kind of situations where once you've proven it once, you've actually proven it. So um, when you think about these situations, you want to think about all three combinations, right? The first two must be greater than the third, then the second and third must be greater than the first, and then the first and third must be greater than the second, until you see that you only really need to look at one, all right? Look for the pattern, because truly when you're given three side lengths, you only really need to compare one sum to the third side. See if you can figure out what that is. Okay, so let's take a look here. First example, let's just name these as side A, B, and C, okay? So we need to say, is A plus B greater than C? Is B plus C greater than A? And is A plus C greater than B? In all three of these cases, we need to make sure that that holds. So now, if I'm looking at my first one, A plus B, is that greater than C? Uh, that is a total no. So we could just stop what we're doing right there and say, no, this will not make a triangle. All right, just for kicks and giggles, let's do the other two. B plus C, that's definitely greater than A. And A plus C, that's definitely greater than B. Those first two are my case that allows me to reject these side lengths as potential side lengths of a triangle. All right, let's take a look at this one. A, B, C. Let's take a look. Is A plus B bigger than C? Yes, it is. Is A plus C bigger than B? Yes, it is. Is B plus C bigger than A? Hmm. Nope. So I've got to reject this one as well. Hmm. Okay, so this is a big no. And this is a big no. And, and if you are asked to justify this, you can just say something like this. 12 plus 18 is not greater than 32. Um, 18 plus 18 is not greater than 36. Did you even know that was a symbol? The not greater than? Okay, let's look at this one. A, B, C. Is A plus B greater than C? Yes. Is A plus C greater than B? Yes. Is B plus C 
greater than A? Yes. Okay. So this one's good. And if you were going to justify it, you would just show all three of those work. Okay. Now, did you figure it out yet? Did you figure out which were the two that you really need to compare? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Because you'll forget if you didn't figure it out yourself, but there is only one pair that you really need to pay attention to. And the clue is in those first two examples. One other type of example we want to look at. In these examples, I'm given two side lengths and I want to know what values could the third side length be? Okay. So we're going to assign a variable to side to the third side length and we're going to put those three inequalities to the test. Okay. So let's say, um, here's uh, A and here's B and our last thing is going to be, let's just call it C. All right. That must mean that 14 plus 22 has got to be greater than C. 14 plus C has got to be greater than 22 and 22 plus C has got to be greater than 14. Okay. So in this case, so we don't need to use that one. Okay, but here let's solve for C by subtracting 14. Okay, so in this inequality, we found that C has got to be greater than 8 if I subtract the 14. And here I found that C has got to be less than 36. So these two inequalities can be put together into a single inequality that looks like this. So this says that C is greater than 8 and less than 36 at the same time. Now, can you find a pattern with these numbers? Keep that in mind as we're going to do this one right here. Okay. Here's A, here's B, and here's C. So we want to think about this. Okay. I know that nine plus C has got to be greater than 15. I know that 15 plus C has got to be greater than nine. And I know that 15 plus 9 has got to be greater than C. Again, we can eliminate this one because 15 is already greater than 9. All right? So now let's solve for C in both these cases. In this case, C is greater than 6. In this case, C is less than 24. And so we can write it as C is greater than 6 and less than 24. And that compound inequality notation. All right, so now do you see what those two numbers represent? All right, last one here. This is kind of tricky. I got 12 and 12. All right, so let's do this one. So here's A and here's B and C is just going to be C. So 12 plus C has got to be greater than 12. That's A and then B plus C has got to be greater than A, and then 12 plus 12 has got to be greater than... Okay, I kind of have two of the same thing, and I don't really need to do it twice, so I'm just going to cross one of them out. And so this gives us that C has got to be greater than zero. All right, C has got to be greater than zero, but C has also got to be less than 24. And if you didn't figure out that inequality thing yet, that probably will give it away for you. So C has got to be between 0 and 24. All right. All right. In the last installment of basic triangle theorems, we're going to talk about the hinge theorem. And it's also known as the alligator theorem for whatever reason. Hmm. I wonder why. Stay tuned to find out.